Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. At sax.com, it's easy to find your new vibe. Dive into the Western trend with gold cowboy boots from Stodd or go full 90s throwback with platforms from Prada. You can shop Saks.com for everything on your agenda, whether it's a breezy Zimmerman dress for a garden party or a bright Chloe blazer for brunch. Find inspiration for your new vibe every day at Saks.com. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it. Yes, they sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all that crap we just love to talk about on ye old Bravo television. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me in his below deck era is Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hello. I'm the new girl. I know we've <laughs> all been excited to see who's coming on board. It's me, Claire Danes. Um, she is we, very Claire Danes, very Claire Danesy, but not as Claire Danesy as that other girl that everybody thought it was who was coming back. The girl, Camille. Who was, yes, Camille. That was real Claire Danes, this and is, yeah. she did not come back. Everybody's like, "Oh my God, it's Camille!" And I thought that it was a spoiler that everybody was giving us. It was not yeah. Camille. Sorry, everybody, and thank you, Jesus. By the way, because mm. I don't need more Camille. I life. could not have dealt with more Camille. No. Um. So uh, we are obviously talking about Below Deck today. Ronnie and I are particularly excited because, as you all know, we are going to Europe for our shows. We're doing a show in London. We're doing a show in Dublin and in Birmingham. And one of our touring colleagues is also going to be doing a show there. And we decided that, you know, women support other women. So we have just bought two tickets to support our dear friend, Taylor Swift. We are going to Stockholm and going to a Taylor Swift show, and we are so excited. We cannot believe we're even doing this, and why we're just wedging it in there. So tell us everything, everyone. We are doing it. The the Taylor Swift era's uh, manifestation is happening for both of us together. You know, it's very exciting because I feel like as I get older, I'm becoming gayer. And that usually doesn't happen, I feel like. I feel like (laughs) I was pretty gay to start off with. I mean, I was... In one way, as I aged, I was getting manlier, believe it or not. But I'm getting gayer now. I went to Beyonce this year, and well, last year, I guess, but August, I mean, within a year, and I'm going to tailor you guys. It's the gayest shit I've ever done. It's like gayer than getting a penis inside of me. So thank you to the gods for keeping me so gay and just letting me marinate my gayness. And also, thanks to Europe, what a difficult place. It's very expensive. Okay, now I can see why you all come here and you're so fucking fancy with your accents and your just general bouginess. <laughs> you're very fancy people. That place is expensive as hell. What the hell am I supposed to do? That dog's all lumpy. How am I supposed to sell him? <laughs> you know, 
and lumpy and tired. Yeah. Uh, well, you would never sell Bueller in Europe. Never. I pay for this shit. This is ridiculous. I'm going to yeah, need a, a separate job for all of this. Now that said, you know, YOLO and, um, yeah, or as I like to say, Yodo, you only die once. Why not die at a Taylor Swift concert? Well, because the other thing is that, you know, I had expressed an interest in going to see Taylor Swift um, and like New Orleans. Well, on StubHub, the tickets in New Orleans start at like 4,500 or 5,000 apiece in like shitty areas. And as it turns out, in Stockholm, not so bad. So what better way to see T-Swift than yeah. being surrounded by all your favorite Scandinavians, right? I mean, those tickets basically paid for themselves. Am I right? <laughs> now, let me tell you what tickets are not paying for themselves. The Crappens tickets. Go get some. <laughs> you need to fund this. This, by the way, our, our live shows have now turned into a GoFundMe for Taylor Swift. Let's be Listen. honest. If uh, what's that guy's name from Big Brother and American Idol who just had to go fund me? Um, what's his name from Big we, Brother and American Idol? Yes, uh, ta- uh, uh, I stuttered. No, um, Todd, Todd, <laughs> Todrick, Todrick Hall. Todrick okay, Hall. so Todrick Hall just had to go fund me. He's like, you guys, I can't pay my rent or I can't pay my mortgage, <laughs> and you know he had this big thing, and then he had a party for mm. himself three days later with a petting zoo. And he's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's anyway, so that's ridiculous. like us. <laughs> yeah, we're Todd <laughs> like us. We're gonna have the most ridiculous GoFundMe ever. But seriously, get tickets. Redding shows, redding shows in Europa, London, Dublin, and Birmingham. That's gonna be and also LA in May. Sorry, I well, first I buried the lead. and then in LA we're doing that first. That's in May, and um, uh, LA is gonna be super fun at the Kookaburra Lounge. That's like May, beginning of May third, fifth. I think, I think May third. I'll look right now. I do have access to technology. I'm coming in May 3rd, I think. So anyway, um, I think it's whatever. Go to watchwhatcrappens.com and figure it out. You'll find it um, somewhere in May. And we're going to be there. It's going to be super fun. And uh, this is a video recap. Also, we have had requests to do Vanderpump Villa. We've refused. And okay, listen. We're pushovers. Just nag us. Okay. All we need nag us. is to be nagged. We both thrive on nags. We love nags. And so we're going to do it. So... We are going to do Vanderpump Villa. We can't do all the episodes. There have already been four episodes on the air. So we are going to start next week with a two-part bonus because we're going to hold this week's bonus until next week. We're going to do uh, kind of an update on the first four episodes. We're going to watch them all. We're going to do uh, character breakdowns of everything going on. So that'll be a two-parter bonus next week. And uh, we're super excited. So watch Vanderpump Villa on Hulu. And uh, find the first episode's going to be on Patreon, and then episode five and on will be on the main feed. So join us for that. It's going to be super mm-hmm. fun. And you don't even have to do anything or buy anything. You're just right here already in your home or your yeah. car or jogging, whatever the fuck you're doing right now. Don't change yeah. it. Yeah. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. It's going to be so fun. So uh, today we have um, the conclusion of Jill Zarin's Reign of Terror on Below Deck, followed by the arrival of a new stew. Um, this re- this Jill Zarin chapter has been one of my favorites of the season, and um, let's, set, let's dive into it, okay? So mm-hmm. um, the issue uh, when we la- last left the, uh, this boat was that uh, Anthony uh, was having some real issues in the kitchen, in the galley, uh, getting out all these different preferences uh, because there was um, a sushi platter that went awry in that there was no vegetable sushi. And he had not anticipated that he needed vegetable sushi for the primary because she's like segueing into raw fish, but she's not there yet. I hate this lady, okay? And you know what? Jill Zarin's all over the internet taking all the heat. And Jill Zarin deserves it. She's an asshole. But you know who's worse? This other lady. Because at least Jill Zarin is an asshole out loud. And she's, like, trying to be nice by being an In asshole. In her way, she like, thinks she's helping. Yeah, she's she, she's trying to be nice. She's still insufferable. But this other girl is just too much. You can't be, right. like, kind of a vegetarian, but, ev- like, she literally has everything wrong with her. I'm just so sick of her. And she's <laughs> stealthy. She's a stealthy pain in the ass where she acts like she's the nice one in the duo. You were sitting right there, ma'am, when Jill said, we want sushi. He said tuna and yellowfin or whatever it was. 
And you sat there and nodded. And she said, and then I just want some crudite de nong because I don't eat the sushi. And you sat there and nodded like it was the best it thing said ever. Nothing. And now you're complaining that there was no vegetable sushi. Well, there was vegetables sitting there. It's called crudite. So get yourself some white rice yeah. and shut the fuck up. I'm sick of listening to you complain, lady. I, you're lucky they didn't throw your gluten-free vegan ass off, half vegan ass off the boat. Ma'am, they gave you vegetable sashimi. You just, you just didn't realize. <laughs> Exactly. Let's go to Rice America, okay? <laughs> you had several pieces of delicate carrot sashimi <laughs> arranged on a plate with some cucumber, I mean, and some celery sashimi. So you should have just like enjoyed it, dip it into the soy sauce, and you would have had your entire experience. One of the, I think the day that I decided I was uh, done with LA for a while. I was out having sushi, and this was actually years before I left. It was like 10 years before I left LA, but I was like, I don't think this is my forever home because I went to sushi someplace, and um, I said, what's this kind of sushi? He goes, oh, instead of rice, it's wrapped in, I think, cucumber. He's like, it's wrapped yeah. in cucumber so you don't have the rice calories. And I said, the rice calories? Fuck this place and fuck you. <laughs> fuck everybody in this restaurant. Who says that? Because when I grew up, I grew up real fat, you know? And in Weight Watchers, rice was like health food. <laughs> they were like, white rice, you can have that. And so I always looked at it as like, I'm being healthy by eating rice. So to even be told, even be suggested that that's like a high calorie thing, I was so upset. And I was like, bye, LA. Anyway, that has nothing to do with any of this, but fuck this Melanie lady. I don't like her. I'm not only uh, leaving LA, I'm leaving Melanie. Bye. Yeah. By Melanie. She is movie. the cucumber cucumber wrap rolls. Because I've had cucumber wrap rolls and they just are so much sadder. They're sadder. They're so much you can't sadder. Replace a bready type thing, a carby type thing with a wet thing. It's it doesn't mm -hmm. work. That's not how it works. People with your spaghetti squash. Stop trying to run spaghetti squash up on me too. Like I just fell off a turnip truck. Okay. Yeah. Like I can I can do a I can do a zoodle reluctantly because it's, you know, sometimes it's just about needing a vehicle to, to bring it, get the sauce in. Yeah. But, um, like, yeah, but, but ultimately I'm still aware that that's a zucchini mm -hmm. and I don't appreciate it. I'm okay with the cauliflower rice that will, I'm down cause I like cauliflower. So I feel like cauliflower rice with like an Indian curry works really well because cauliflower flavors work nicely with those those, those flavor profiles. But I'm not going to do a cauliflower rice in any rice situation. I would never do cauliflower rice with sushi. Um, that's just I happen to like the application of cauliflower. Well, I just happen to like what? cauliflower with what Indian food. Okay, I like cauliflower. Sorry. Okay, bring Sorry. over the manager. Like I'll apologize myself. You know what? That. I like the brassica with my curry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, second night, Melinda's like, I eat cucumber and avocado roll sushi, but I barely do fish. She's telling the yoga lady, like, Jennifer, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I can't believe there's not sushi for me. Like, barely, barely do fish. Shut up, Melanie. Yeah, okay? I don't do raw so, fish. Raw, and like I said this last week, raw fish is, I feel like, the healthiest version of fish. Like, that is actually, you know, if you're being new agey, and I think you care about yoga, and meditation it's strange to me that she has a reluctance around raw fish right like when we think of like raw diets we often associate that with people who are super into like new age yoga stuff like that like health forward so the fact that she's like doesn't want to have raw fish it just, just seems to go against everything she seems to be about Listen, I know there are vegans. I know there are gluten-free people. I know that there are different things. We all have our thing, right? I have things. I'm like partially vegetarian, you know? Like, I get it. So I'm not being a total hypocrite on this. I just think some people like Melinda take it too far where they're not getting any respect in the world. Like, it doesn't matter if she's rich. It doesn't matter if she's successful. She feels disrespected in her life. And this is like the one area in her life where she's like, you're going to respect me. And that is through my food choices. And I see it through a lot of people where that's that's their thing. It's like their yeah, controlling children. thing. And if you don't kowtow to every fucking food demand they have, that's their way of being like, you don't respect me and I will not stand for this because you tried to serve me a cracker you know and it's like get the fuck out that's of why here. that's you why know, take kids this out in a healthier way you know go kill somebody don't take this out on on <laughs> my dinner i don't i only go to dinner once every couple of weeks this is why kids 
are such little assholes when it comes to foods because I think it's their little power trip, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, it's like not even me just being like, oh, I hate kids. I think like everyone is aware that like a kid, when kids are like, I only eat like pizza and hot dogs, which by the way, was me as a child as well. And I, Cause I don't even want to hear it from someone who says you're a child once too, which is my least favorite argument. Like, yeah, no, no, no shit. I, that's what I'm speaking from experience here. Mm -hmm. It's like a power play by the kid because you know what? There are a lot of kids out there that just will eat all sorts of interesting things. And like, why is it that like some kids just will not eat anything for years? And I, for, I, I it's a power play. People use it as a power move all the yeah. time. So Melinda no is basically a five-year-old. So go poop your yeah, fucking diaper you. somewhere, Melinda. Okay. I'm sick of your <laughs> shit. Okay. So now the galley, um, other people's shit that I'm sick of today Fraser and the captain, you guys need to leave this chef alone, okay? You've seen that he has just been abused by the fishless wonder over there, Melinda. He's got Jill Zarin up his asshole. Barbie gave him all the wrong orders last week. Could you give the guy, like, somewhat of a break? And they're also gaslighting him by being like, oh, my God, he's going crazy. And he's not even going crazy. You guys are literally making him crazy until by the end he's crazy and fucking up everything. It's all your fault. Leave the chef alone. But he did have that episode like two weeks ago where he like made an enormous mess in his kitchen and was up till 4 a.m. cleaning it. And uh, that's the part, like, though, he was up till 4 a.m. cleaning it. See, that's the part. He but I'm saying like there. that's he had no sleep and that had like he wasn't able to focus. It's been like a domino effect ever since that night. That night. Well, I him. love dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> they should have ordered some for this boat at this point. <laughs> like, they his pizza's cold. You know what you need to do? Do you have a brick oven brick oven on this yacht? You need to warm it up in there. That's all. That's all. You do that, it tastes warm. Everyone will be happy. That's all. Just a tip for your next charter. So Fraser goes down to the galley, and he's like, um, so you don't have other rolls, other rolls without raw fish in them, for fishing Melinda down there. And he's like, no, because I have five other courses. I don't have rice for the course. Uh, you know, I don't have rice. I have to make rice. I mean, come on. And Fraser's like, um, the chef may have bitten off more than he could chew. Um... Didn't you know what was being made? Why is Fraser getting away with taking no responsibility for anything, okay? You mm -hmm. saw what was up there on the board that he was making. You take some responsibility. Also, Fraser's making me mad. Also, everything's making me mad, which is weird because it's the best day ever and we got Taylor Swift. No, that's why. Tickets. But I think we that's did. what makes me happy is being angry. It's so I was about weird. To say, that is the translation of our giddiness. We're like, we're so giddy. We're just going to yell at people. Bar Fraser. <laughs> Like, like, Fraser doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, my God. What a, we're so happy. Fraser's a piece <laughs> of shit. Oh, what a great day. Well, also, in, not in Fraser's defense, but also, how does this guy not have left? Like, why? how does he not anticipate that people may want more sushi? Did like, you see the plates of sushi? Okay, you can't even do that because they were. it was the biggest fucking plates of sushi I've ever seen. They were literally piled on top. Half of it was still left over. I would eat all of it and ask for more. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm sorry I'm, to interrupt I'm you. I'm just... wild. No, it's okay. But I think I've interrupted you about twelve times. Uh, <laughs> just wrong. during very your like, well, you have to, or otherwise you can't talk today. We have to. We, we're going to interrupt because we're giddy. We're Taylor Swift giddy right now. We can't control ourselves. What a piece of shit Fraser is. I'm going to be in such a good mood at that concert. I'm going to be like, fuck Taylor Swift. I hate her. Fire Taylor Swift. Fire her. She probably doesn't even eat raw fish. Loser. And oh wait, wait we didn't mention even, that guy. We didn't even mention the biggest part of it all. Which is that um, we're going to recap the concert. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be there with a note, an actual notebook recapping this shit. <laughs> like I'm a reviewer. We're going to recap it. Yeah. Um, or at least we're going to aspire to. Um, we'll also be like enduring massive jet lag. But, you know, that'll be part of the whole experience. It'll be my excuse so, to sit down the whole time. Because, you know, everybody like stands up and puts their arms in the air and shit. I don't do that. So I'll be like, I have to, guys, I'm writing, I'm writing a review. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm here from the Crappens Times. So, um, uh, so Sheffy is having a hard time. And then Jill is like, you know what? It's 830. I, I see no chef. Fraser. Fraser, I spoke to the chef about having dinner at 830. What are the chances of that happening? Huh? What do you think it's going to, you think it's going to happen now at 830? Jill is just having the best time of her life. Like she could not be happier to look at her watch and see that there's three minutes left. No one's sitting like a three minutes to 830, also known as 827. No one's sitting at the table. Dinner is clearly not going to start on time. She's going to get to speak up about it. Like that, like she's like orgasming right now. Yeah, she loves it. So much to complain about. 
So then Fraser's like, oh my God, I will ask Jill. I will ask. So he goes back down and he's saying, they want to sit now, chef. And he's like, oh, I will make the magic happen. And he's like, did you hear that? I think he's going insane. He believes in magic now. This Harry Potter's not real. We need to put him in some sort of a hospital. Very worried for the chef. I just don't think he's there yet. Oh, really? Why don't you go have another petty spat with your fucking underling and make her cry and then tell her off while she's making her cry? You petty ass talking about professionalism. Fired. <laughs> I've never seen you so joyful, Ronnie. Um, <laughs> I'm like, it's like Christmas morning. <laughs> So uh Fraser calls up Barbie for service. So Barbie is uh she's uh she's really mad. She's still really mad because um while she was running around on the boat inefficiently, uh like Zandy and Fraser got to meditate for like 20 minutes or something while they were on the on the beach. So uh sh- she's like heading up. Okay, Barbie, Barbie, hurry up, Barbie, hurry up, Barbie, 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 do everything, Barbie, 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 Barbie. She's doing this whole thing like she's the most besieged person on the boat. Yeah, and she's like, I mean, I know where I'm at down, but like, what am I, Cinderella? I mean, this is like ridiculous. Like, what am I supposed to do, you know? I mean, it's like a mixture of like, I don't want to be here, but also I'm not a quitter. So I'm not going to pull through and like, I'm just going to give this like fake ass smile. Look, here's me smiling. Like, that's not smiling. You have to at least make the smile. I have an excuse not to. I get Botox. I'm old. What's your excuse? You're, you're five years old. Smile, Fake smile, girl. She's like, here's my fake smile. <laughs> and then she's like, and I'm not going to complain. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to be like silent. You're, you're going to just like glower at your boss and <laughs> be passive aggressive. And later on, she complains that like, if I don't say anything, I'm passive aggressive. It's because you're being passive aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I really like I mean, Barbie. I shockingly lo- really love Barbie. I like usually this. I feel like they're they're trying to trigger us by putting this stew who's like smarting off to Fraser. But I'm Team Barbie on this one. I think Fraser got on her about her attitude, which she was probably right to do in the beginning. And I think she's done a good job of changing herself around, and he still doesn't appreciate it. I like Barbie. I don't think she's turned around her attitude. She's definitely doing this thing of like, I'm doing all the work. Um, you're just doing the work. As per your job. <laughs> yeah. And, if, the and like Zandy is on, like, did they meditate for 20 minutes? Sure. But I guarantee you that if Barbie were out there getting to do the meditation, she would come back and be like, oh my God, like, yes, we meditated, but it was like having to like serve guests the entire time. Like you would be in the cross crosshairs of Jill Zarin out there. That's like a danger zone. So yeah. I don't know. I just, I like her. She's one of the few that can complain that I still like, but it's also like, it's your job. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Professional welder Shayna Ford used VR training developed by ForgeFX to hone her skills as a welder. The more time that you spend practicing it, that's what separates a good welder from a great welder. VR training can help students like Shayna repeatedly practice specific skills. Virtual reality definitely helps because the more muscle memory that you have, the smoother your weld is. Explore more stories like Shayna's at meta.com slash metaverse impact. If you like a good murder mystery story, you'll love June's Journey, a free hidden object mobile game where Detective June Parker unravels the mystery of her sister's death. Travel back to the beautifully illustrated 20s, find clues, discover hidden objects, and watch the story unfold with new chapters released weekly. Put your detective skills to the test. Download June's Journey on Android or iOS or play online via Facebook games. So, I mean, I agree with you, but I still, I, I'm still Team Barbie. So, um, the chef is doing that thing, I think all gays is he's he's not gay but um, he's, he's not gay, gay adjacent he's gay adjacent do you think he's yeah he, he's he's european yeah and i don't mean like actually like i don't know you shouldn't speculate on people's sexuality oh, 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 i know we're not supposed to do that it's so ter- it's so bad when we do that but uh, i'm not really doing that i'm just saying he's like gay enough to be friends with personality wise so anyway he's doing that thing we all do when he's like he would come to taylor with us you know what i mean and make out probably yeah so he's um He's doing that thing we all do when we really need confidence. He's talking to himself like a straight guy would. He's like, come on, bro. You can do this, bro. Bro. 
bro, come on, Matt. You know, like we all start yelling at each other, like a <laughs> yelling at ourselves, like a coach in junior high. <laughs> you do and that? then me, do, do, do I, does my coach, did my coach do that? No. Do you do that? Like when you need, when you're, when you're insecure, are you like, Ben, get it together, bro. You're, you're going to be fine. I do that. I talk to myself like I'm the voiceover guy in a Ford truck commercial. I'm like, no. through the rain, through the mud, I persevere because I'm a man. No, I, I don't get, if I'm feeling insecure about something, I don't give myself pep talks. Instead, I just like text like five different friends and say, oh my God, I'm like really nervous about this. Um, I just like, I put it on to other people. So, uh, meanwhile, Fraser is, uh, tells Barbie, they want champagne. Please grab the Dom. She goes, I'll get it. She does this, like, she gets this, like, very, like, robotic voice where she, she's like, I want you to see I'm extremely angry, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna act extremely servile at the same time. And you should feel bad for me for being so muted, for, not muted, you, for having my voice being taken away to such an extreme that I'm just an empty vessel of a stew right now. She does. She's entering what I refer to as her Handmaid's Tale era. This is where <laughs> she's just like the most put upon. <laughs> do, you, do you ever watch that show? It's such a good, but also depressing as fuck show. Uh, and yeah, this is this that. is her Handmaid's Tale era. Okay, so he's like, oh, are you crazy? You're looking crazy. You can calm down now. She's like, just getting the champagne like you asked me to. He's like, all right, geez, go take your attitude with you, you know? So the guests <laughs> are watching them and um, they go to the dinner table and uh, Jill gives her review for the dinner table. Hmm. Wow. Wow. This is like Le Bernadin. This is like, you know what this is like? <laughs> this is like Michelin style level. You know what this is like? <laughs> This is like uh, Ahmad Ajadad. What was <laughs> Ahmadinejad? Ahmadinejad. Remember last week? What was the word she said last week that I was like, "Oh, I had so many syllables." I love the way Jill said it. Ahmadinejad. <laughs> this is like this is like what I imagine every table was like for Ahmadinejad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Fraser is telling Zandi to take care of the cabins because something's wrong with Barbie. <laughs> He's like <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> Barbie's losing it. I don't know what's going on. And Zandy's like, well, I did have a snappy moment with her. And then we see all the sushi left over at the bar and all the crudite. And then we see what Zandy is talking about with the problem with Barbie. And we see the napkin fight again, where Barbie's like, I mean, are there any napkins? She's like, you can steam your own napkins. She's sus. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe she told me to steam my own napkins. <laughs> Doesn't she realize how hard it is to steam? <laughs> to iron a six inch by six, six inch uh, piece of fabric. <laughs> this will ruin my entire day. So Jill is like, so Captain Kerry comes to join them. Jill's like, oh, look, it's the captain. He has like, okay, everyone, there's the captain. All right, let me give you, okay, when you're on a yacht, there's a captain. I just know this because I charter a lot of yachts. So there's a captain and he rides, he drives the boat for us. So this is him. This is him right here. Welcome. Welcome to our table. <clears throat> All right, losers, it's me. I've got dinner to announce. And Gary's like, ah, here we go. Here we go. And he's like, all right, we've got chicken pad thai, tofu pad thai, and vegetable curry. All right? So let's start with the primer. Why are you asking them? Who's vegetarian and who's That's... not? Just serve the fucking things to the vegetarian people. Why? Don't give them exactly. so many options. Don't give options. And also just like... Maybe just make a whole one big, make one big vegetarian meal for everyone. How about that? That might be fun. So she's well, like, I would like to start with the primary. Live without their meat. They especially there are some American people who are like, I can't go a meal with that. I mean, I'm in Texas too, but it's like, Yeesh. yeah, that's true. That there are a lot of people like that. Yeah. Um. So I like Fraser saying, I'd like to start with the primary. Really emphasizing in front of Captain Kerry, like who's in charge here. So Melinda's like, hmm. I think I'll do like a half and half. Um, no fish, please. And Jill's like, oh, yeah, you know what? And put a bowl of pad thai on the side. I just love Jill just jumps right into the primary moment right now. <laughs> She'll take that too. Trust me. Okay. I know her. I know her. Just bring it on the side. She's going to want a pad thai on the side. So they order, and um, then he's muttering to himself as he goes down to the galley. He's like, you've got to get your weakest to be your strongest. Get your weakest to be the strongest. Okay, chef, here are the orders. <laughs> Little fucker. I would push him down those stairs if I heard him muttering that about me. <laughs> yeah. Here he is. 
Um, so then Jill is now, she's now shifting into Yenta mode, uh, sort of gossiping to uh, Carrie about everyone in front of her. She's like, so Captain Carrie, guess what? These two right here, Melanie, Melanie, who doesn't eat the fish. Okay. Melanie, they have eight kids, Captain. Eight kids. Can you imagine that? Do you, can you imagine how much fabric we would have to supply her from Zaren Fabrics just to, just to clothe that family? Listen, that's why I'm friends with them. You, it never ends with her. They're like the Von Trapp family over there, okay? Like, clothing that family for one season keeps Jill Zarin fabrics open, all right? <laughs> okay, Melanie, talk about yourself while you wait for your pad tie. Here she's about to talk. Captain, she's about to talk. Is everybody listening? Okay, Melanie, all right, everyone, go ahead. Melanie, go ahead, Melanie. Melanie. Melanie, say something. Okay, well, she missed a chance. Anyway, I have, uh, okay. the, cap the captain, do you know that you have nugget eyes? It's like five stories down, but it's amazing. You've got this girl who runs up and down the stairs. She was... She was crying right now and beating her head up against the wall. But you know what? She does make an amazing Diet Coke now. I taught her that. I taught her. I taught, I taught her how to make good Diet Coke. By the way, so you're learning Turkish? Have you been to the Hag Sophia? That's in Turkey. Yeah, it's a, it's a place. You know, Turkey. Uh, it's uh, sort of in the middle of like uh, Europe and Asia, the same place. Yeah, I know these things. If you need any information about Turkey, just let me know. <laughs> um, so, Melinda, like I said, eight kids. Or Melanie. She had Melanie. Melanie has no power in her life. She has eight fucking kids. Guess who gets all the attention and guess whose needs are always being met in that family? Those fucking kids, okay? That's, that's yeah. why Melanie's like this. So, you know, I feel bad for being mean to Melanie because that's gotta be hard. Yeah, because she lives in the shadow of her eight children and her father-in-law who made a Moderna vaccine. So like Melanie needs to actually just like create a space for herself, which is like a sushi pass of aggression. Yeah. Um, so poor thing. But also stop having children. Like no one needs eight children. You know what I mean? Like that's just polluting. That's pollution. Okay, so Fraser is um asking if he can lay the chicken down. And the chef is like, Oh my god, I fucked myself by you know, we're having a la carte and it's so much work because instead of just one main course, now three different at the same moment. All these courses. But it's also like pad thai. Like, why can't you just like make the pad thai and then and it's like tofu versus chicken? Can't you? Why did you like, couldn't you have just like prepped this stuff beforehand and then you just mix the proper protein into the proper plate? Like, is it really that bad? This is not like, I think oh, he's he making did. like a, yeah, but like he's acting like, oh, I really fucked myself. It's like, yeah. Do you think you? it's the curry? Maybe it's the curry. I don't know. I literally just had Thai food last night. And I think that like putting out an order of curry and, um, pad thai which is literally what i had last night is not the it's not a make or break moment i'm sorry to say this yeah. but it's just not <laughs> yeah i hear it's literally you. like you get that curry going like two hours ahead of time maybe you probably don't even need that much time yeah get the pad thai. I, I don't know i don't see why this is so chaotic for him i think he's just thrown off because it's so many different american needs <laughs> The gluten-free, the dairy-free, the Jill Zarin of it all. I think it's just so much. So he's, uh, Fraser is basically helping him plate, which is what he's supposed to do. And he's like cleaning up the plates for him, like doing the napkin circle around the plate. And he's like, oh my God, what would happen if I wasn't here? Welcome to doing your fucking job, Fraser. Seriously. <laughs> so then the chef, um, basically now they're missing a plate. And Jill, because Jill Zarin, Jill Zarin, actually, she has an instant orgasm when they miss a plate. She's like, oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. No, you guys start. You guys start. I'll wait. I'll wait. You know, don't wait. Don't, don't worry about me. You just go. You just go. I want you guys to eat. I want. I can eat mine cold. It's fine. I don't want to wait. I don't want you guys to wait for me. That's just, it's fine. I can have a Diet Coke. I taught them how to make good Diet Coke. It's good. It's okay. <laughs> Gary's like, I don't, don't, don't want to wait. wait. I, you know, I don't want to wait. She goes, but you, you, you know what? Don't wait. I don't want you to, Gary. But I could. Gary, don't wait. This is a greasy head. Greasy head, Gary. You know what? Don't wait. So you could finish <laughs> earlier. So you could go wipe your head off. I mean, seriously, Captain, look at his head. You're bald. Look, <laughs> Gary, look how the Captain's head is not greasy. And Captain, look how the... Don't you, don't you guys talk to each other? Isn't that what bald people do? <laughs> don't you see each other in the hallway and say, hey, bald person, let me help you. <laughs> You've got grease on your head. Maybe carry around a napkin in your back pocket. That's all I'm saying. Ding dong. You know, just wipe each other's heads down if you need to. Like, who's going to be there for you if not another baldy? You know what I'm saying? You know what? Don't. It's it's fine. Answer that question on your own time. I'll wait. I'll wait. I, I'm okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I've got no problems with this. It's fine. I'm going to survive this. I've survived worse. You know what? There was there was a moment 
where uh, cotton was in short supply and I was it was trouble getting the rugs in. That was very difficult. Poor Bobby. I remember Bobby at that time. He actually made a rug of rice. Can you believe that? A <laughs> rice rug. It actually became a big thing for a while. It's, I've had worse times, all right? Yeah. <laughs> They're just shoving a, a piece of bread in her mouth like, please, <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> So, um, so then they finally eat their pad thai and it's all cold. So Jill's like, cold. <laughs> I love you. She just announces, cold. Okay, Cap you know, you know what? Captain's not going to like this. It's cold. It's terrible. It's, this is terrible. Gary, it's terrible. Should I say something? I'm gonna, you know I'm going to say something. But I'll, you want, I'll wait. I'll wait until you eat. Then you know that I'll say something then. Whatever you I want. I love that Gary actually goes, are you going to say something? She's like, I don't know. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to say something. Should I say something? Should, do you think he can hear me right now talking at this level right right down the table, right across the table? <laughs> this is Jill. I don't know if I'm going to say something. You know, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to say It's cold. It's cold. This is cold. Send it back. You know what? I don't want to say anything that the captain could hear, so I'm just going to say Hava Saguk, okay? That's in Turkish. Surely he won't. Oh, so it's cold then. Oh, damn it. I'm gonna get oh my god, this man knows everything. Can you see? You see? You see how smart, non-greasy, bald-headed men are? <laughs> Gary, I'm just saying. Take a page, Gary. Fraser, Fraser, can I get a blanket, please? Can I get oh, are you cold, Jill? No, but my pad tie is. I thought maybe if I just wrap it around it. <laughs> Okay, so the captain's like, this is the worst dinner service we've had all season. My food's already cold. Something's going on in the galley. If I look like I'm pissed off, they're all going to get pissed off. So now I've got to fake it. And on top of that, we've got Jill. Cut to Jill like, can cold. you believe it? <laughs> it's cold. Feel my finger. I just put my <laughs> finger inside of my food. Feel how cold it is. Like, did my finger just go in a, in a bowl of pad thai? Or was it in Alaska? Somebody tell me. Where's it been? I you know what? I always thought I always thought I was pretty progressive about the environment, but it turns out there's no such thing as global warming because feel how cold this is. <laughs> Freezing. Um, I like Captain Kerry saying that he's going to have to like not show that he's pissed off. And it cuts to him, and he has like the tightest, angriest smile on, and his face has turned bright red. He's like... <laughs> really yeah, cool he doesn't thing. hide it well, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben is talking to Dylan and he's like, so have you ever hooked up with a charter guest? And he's like, I've hooked up with charter guests. I have a lot of guest stories. I'm very naughty, very naughty boy. Just giving a high five count is hooking up with a charter guest. <laughs> he goes, growing up, no one ever told me I was good looking. And now I get hit on by so many guys. <laughs> and so many girls too. Definitely the girls. <laughs> Definitely the girls. Girls, 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 girls. Did I say guys? I mean, girls, 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 girls. One time a girl, a girl on a yacht, I went to live with her in Berlin. And I like when all the girls come up to me, but I also like to hunt. I like to hunt for girls. You know, because if a girl would come up to me in a bar, I'd go fall on the floor, do some push-ups, smooth my eyebrows and say, hey, what's up, baby? High five. High five, baby. It's hit or miss. It's hit or miss. <laughs> this fucking guy. This guy. I think he has a lot of unpacking to do with his uh, to be authentic to who he is. Um, so uh, well, He can't be authentic to who he is. There's too many calories. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, this guy, I, I wonder if in the act of like washing off all the calories from the ham, he somehow like the chemical residue of the Oscar Mayer like seeped into his brain in some way that has made him this way. Yeah, poor thing. But uh, he's, yeah, poor thing. Poor, annoying yeah. thing. I love that every, every girl who comes on the show is like, he is officially unfuckable after like two seconds. <laughs> he's, the, he's, the, he's so unfuckable. <laughs> he's the unfuckable Kimmy Schmidt. So, uh... <laughs> Ben, uh, oh, so anyway, we're in back in the galley, and Fraser's just like, we need dessert. That's not dessert. Okay, we need, because because uh, Chef is only just starting a dessert. He's like, he's pouring flour into a bowl. Like, I don't know. I forget what the dessert even is supposed to be, but it's so far away from it. So now they have to stall. They have to kill 20 minutes. And uh, <laughs> because I don't know if they'll, you know, because if they don't kill 20 minutes, then Jill's going to lose her mind if the plates are cleared and there's no dessert in front of them. Listen, if you want to kill 20 minutes, just pass the table and say, Sporks, the mixture between a spoon and a fork, go. And then just listen to Jill. You know what? I never agreed with that. 
a spoon and a fork? Who wants to eat with a spoon that's also a fork? What if you're trying to eat ice cream or something? Do I want to poke myself in the lip? No, I really don't want to eat. <laughs> She'll go on for 30 minutes about a damn spork. Just come up with a word and drop it. Jill's like her own improv team. <laughs> She'll be like, <laughs> Jill, can you just remind, could you just tell us all again about how to make good Diet Coke? And can you explain the theory behind each step? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, first thing you got to do. I learned this when I was in Turkey, Captain, so it's relevant to you. Uh, well, first, you find the ice. Got to be nugget ice. Got to be good ice. If it doesn't, I don't care where it comes from. If it comes from the galley, if it comes from the bar area, it's got to be nugget ice. 45 minutes later. Then you take the ice. You put it in the glass. Stack it. Doesn't matter the orientation. It's all going to melt anyway. So everyone's everyone taking notes? Everyone? <laughs> uh, so Barbie uh, wastes time by making everybody um, a drink. Uh, like a pre-dessert yes. drink, which is this made was from, smart. I think almond milk and a touch of strawberry and little umbrellas, and they're like, "Oh, very nice." Well, it's a before dessert drink. This is fantastic. <laughs> Do you have a spork I mean, for this? Because it's <laughs> ice, but it's also a drink. It's very confusing on how to eat this. I'm just saying. I've I've never seen Diet Coke uh, served so pale, but <laughs> I suppose it'll do. It looked disgusting to me, but I thought it was actually a very smart idea, which is like give something that speaks of dessert but isn't dessert at all and just kills time. Yeah. Like that was, that was clever. So then Fraser passes Barbie and he's like, how's it going, babe? And she just ignores him. And <laughs> he's like, good chat. Great chat. So then um, Jill is saying, so captain, have you ever hired family before? What's that like? Oh my God. I can't even imagine working with my daughter. Seriously. Like very difficult, very lovely girl. But you know what? I, I, so many questions about fat camp. A anytime I take her anywhere, you send one, you take a girl, you send a girl to fat camp one time in her life. I have to hear about it seriously everywhere I go. The people are always asking me about it. How could you do this to Ali? How could you do this to Ali? You know what? It wasn't a prison. It was a camp. Okay. Camp is for fun. All right. It's for fun with less hot dogs than a normal camp. But otherwise, it's the same kind of camp. It's a camp, but with more speed walking. Okay. Is that so bad? Have you ever done that to, to a member of your family, Captain? <laughs> well, uh, I'm not sure really for all of that, but uh, I did hire my girlfriend once. Oh, okay. So you met her on a ship? Wow. Wow. <laughs> 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 Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I got lost. So now Fraser is now Fraser and Barbie. Fraser's just like, what's going on, babe? You seem quiet. She goes, yes. Hmm? Yes. My fake smile only lasts so long. Okay, Barbie. You know that Barbie's like a vague poster on Facebook. That just happened. What happened, Barbie? Wow, I can't even believe that that happened last night. Like, she was probably the original clickbaiter, right? Yeah. You know everything. My fake smile can only last so long. I'm like, well, you put, shouldn't have put it on in the first place. Or just one that says, that happened. Or <laughs> um, the disrespect, about, dot, dot, dot. About last night. Commercials, here comes one right now. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie. And we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews. But now, we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie. And we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. So Captain Carey's like, well, everyone, I'm going to depart a... Duolingo waits for no one. Got to keep that streak alive. So have a great rest of your meal. And he's like, the food was average. The timing was shit. I need to talk to Anthony at the end of the chatter. No need talking to him now, but I'm not happy. I'm less happy than a Joey that fell out of the sack. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's over. Everybody goes to bed. Uh, the staff goes to bed, except for Barbie, who has to stay up. And he's like, all right, Zan Zandy Fraser, there's a clock off. And then he just looks at Barbie and she's like... <laughs> Take smiles back. <clears throat> so Zandy is <laughs> so Zandy is done with her shift. So Fraser's cleaning the bar. Zandy sits down at the bar stool for a moment just to 
check in. And Fraser's like, but tomorrow night is going to be the most shit ever. Bobby's pissed. The energy is horrific. We've got no stew. I'm fatter than I've ever been before. It's going to go off. <laughs> so Barbie comes over and he's like, how's it going over there, gorgeous? And she just ignores him again. <laughs> he's like, God. <laughs> So it's like, what is that about? It's like, I have no idea. But Barbie goes to Kyle. She goes, so now I go down. And basically, they're like meditating at the bar. They're like just sitting there, which is basically like meditation. Like, it's crazy. Like, why do they get to meditate so much? I mean, she's doing yoga. She's she's talking too much shit. I'm just over this. I'm just over this. I'm so sick of being a saint. I'm about to lose it. And Kyle's like, I'll just keep smiling there. See you in a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't worry. Turn that frown upside down here in Brigadoon. So mm-hmm. then we got to the chef. <laughs> <laughs> now the chef is mopping. And he's like, I see the dinner was bad. Uh, honestly, I don't have all this experience with uh, pescatarian, but vegan, and uh, I don't want to be on this charter. I want to go to my room and cry all night. And tomorrow I will drink a lot and go, mummy, 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 mummy. Uh. Baby, have a sagook outside. I really can't stay. Baby, have a sagook outside. Oh, sorry there. I was just uh, practicing my Turkish. All right, good night. We need to talk. Not now. Not now. <laughs> yeah, I like th- I like that Captain Curry is uh, practicing for uh, spending the holidays in Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> so... Now Ben is talking to Fraser in the mess, and he's like, oh, I need to make a decision. He goes, "What? which way are you leaning then? And he's like, well, Dylan is great, but he's like a puppy, a bit excited and over the top. Or I feel like Sonny knows the boat quite well, but obviously we're sleeping together. And Fraser's like, oh, be careful with that. Yeah, you've kind of got yourself into a pickle there. But just keep fucking, just keep fucking your under- underling, Ben. Sounds like yeah. a great, great plan. You're already not being careful there. How's nobody, how is this show just, we ask this on every season of every iteration of this show, but how has the real world not caught up with this show yet? And sexual harassment laws, et cetera. I think the real world just doesn't exist on yachts. Yachts are, are inherently a fantasy. And I think it just, it just goes from there. (laughs) That's my think piece. I mean, you get to fuck Ben. What kind of fantasy is this? So this is a very yeah, low rent fantasy. Like you get a fucking Ben and fantasy. clean some toilets. Ugh. <laughs> so Ben tells us, I need someone I can trust for seconds for second for lead deck hand. I mean, Dylan is everything I need on paper. He's knowledgeable. He's good on deck. Doesn't have a vagina though, so that's a problem. Sonny gets well gets on well, gels well with the crew, and you can trust her. And I, you know, I have to assess these two. I don't know. It's a hard time for me. Well, I'll tell you this much. At the end of the day, you get nothing from nothing. And that's all you can say for the life of the pool. Uh, the person doing the most work is the one who needs to get the job. No, Sunny does not to be getting, need to be getting that job. You're fucking Sunny, and she doesn't know how to tie the ties yet. Okay? I just saw her learning ties last week. She can't be lead that can. There. I solved it for you. The Dylan gets it. <laughs> we can't Dylan. just not give Dylan his props because he's annoying. You know, annoying people deserve to live too. Absolutely. They. I mean, look, look how look Jill Zarin flourishing. Look at us. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> look at us for twelve years going strong, annoying the Bravo celebrities, annoying the hell out of everybody as much as possible. You know, we deserve life. I'm here to advocate for annoying people. Yeah, I just. Went wow for 45 seconds. So <laughs> I know. I know a bit about this. So yeah. it's bedtime and everyone everyone goes to sleep and Barbie is up late cleaning and she's she goes into the into the laundry room and she's like, fuck you, I'm not helping you, stupid ass bitch. <laughs> it's like so mad that Zandy actually sat down when that's actually all Barbie wanted to do. And let's not forget that last charter, Barbie sat down and took like a two hour break when she's supposed to have 15 minutes. And now she's that's like true. so mad that Zandy it's like sat on a stool at the end of her shift. Yeah, Barbie has been known to sit. That's for sure. Yeah, um, she's sitting Barbie. Yeah. So now it's morning and she wakes. Uh, she goes to bed going, I hate these fucking people. Which is funny because that's how I go to bed too. So like I see you, Barbie. So morning, <laughs> Ben is hugging Sunny from behind. And she's like, I grew up with my parents being so in love. And every day they would cuddle. And that just shaped me how I am. Because I want to feel things, you know? 
and I know he likes me, and I, I trust him. Okay, your parents sounded confident. You do not sound confident. You sound insane, and you sound more insane as this show goes on. So you missed a lesson. I'm just saying, go back to your parents because you're she's, struggling. You're struggling. She's one fry short of a poutine. Let's put it that way. So Captain Karen. <laughs> Captain Carey gets a text uh, that a new stew is going to be um, arriving later. And he's he's basically like, well, the cart is in you, which as we all know is, you better watch out. You better not cry. <laughs> in the spirit. <laughs> okay, so. Noel, uh, Baba. <laughs> Uh, Noel, uh, Santa Claus, say a gally, your Santa Claus, say a gally, your Santa Claus, say a gally, your. <laughs> so Fraser goes up to take <laughs> breakfast orders, uh, and he's like, So I'd like to talk to you about breakfast. And Jill goes, So should we tell you what we want now? So you're sure it's ready? Yes, Jill, that's what ordering is. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Just put out a whole bunch of platters of sushi again. Make sure it's all raw fish. Then put out some crudités, but maybe put like an egg next to it. That way it's breakfast. Okay, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Could you do this? Put a fart on a plate and serve it to Melinda. Because honestly, I'm <laughs> sick of this bitch. Okay? You know what? And the, the most, the richest out of all of us sometimes need to be humbled. So keep up the good work. Okay? <laughs> So Fraser's like, your options are burrito, smoked salmon benedict, veggie omelet, or my eternal disdain. Guess what? That one's for free and you're getting it anyway. And uh, what's her face? Not Melinda. What's her? Melanie. Melanie's like, I'm vegan. Yes, we fucking know. I have the vegan option. Okay. All right. So now it's time for um, the order to go to the kitchen. And Fraser's like, I've got their food order. They've all got something different. Yeah, you offer them all too many options. This is called managing expectations and service. Yes. You've got to manage yeah. the expectations. He this, sucks at that. This is when you do the trick where you say, today we are offering a special of smoked salmon benedict with poppy seeds and French fries on top. Do you want that? And they all go, oh, yeah, we'll do the special. Because then they all do the special, and then you pretty much make one thing. Yeah. You just say, here's your option. We're going to be bringing it soon. Hope you enjoy it. And then you put mm -hmm. out some fruit and shit on the side for them to choose yeah, from. Fruit and shit yeah. and some croissants. Or maybe put out some of those flat croissants that I just I texted you about. Could you believe those things? Could you believe it? Yeah. I mean, I've sat on croissants before. <laughs> on accident. You're a flat croissant innovator. <laughs> I invented something a very long. Next, you're going to send me an article. You're going to be like, do mm, you know what's really taken off? M&Ms from couch cushions. People are just <laughs> it's a TikTok this. craze right now. <laughs> All right, so, so breakfast, um, they're served, and uh, Barbie is checking with Fraser, and she's like, "Where do you need me?" And he's like, "Good morning, you all right?" She's like, "That's just how I wake up, babe." He's like, "Okay, well, uh, you seem quiet." She's like. But I just woke up. That's how I am. So Zandy's like, I have to pee. Will you go watch my station? So she leaves. And Barbie's like. <sighs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Barbie's like, I'm like annoying Fraser right now. Because like, I don't know how to communicate with him. And he like dismisses everything I feel. And I just, I can't win. And I can't be myself. I really feel defeated. What is, what is the real Barbie? And by the way, also, why, what does the Barbie being herself have to do with her cleaning a table? You're really like, is it, is no. it, is, she's like i can't be myself so therefore i can't iron this napkin i don't see how one thing has to do with another it's also a very recent thing i would say in the past couple of decades that people are like um he dismisses my feelings you're at work like yeah. seriously how, there are no feelings in service like no one how about you watch about remains of the you're day. literally here to, to care about everyone else's feelings and i'm saying that as someone from service like you can't walk you can't be in service and have an attitude like that you'll get run over immediately you have to not give a shit you have to not have feelings get rid of your feelings kill them you know kill them to have this job i mean literally watch any merchant ivory production and you will see how it's done 
which is you repress everything, keep everything inside. And if you fall in love with someone, you offer them like a handkerchief. And that's like the most romantic gesture. Like, oh, may I get this handkerchief for you? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. And they can stare at each other. Your prize is for the rest of your life, Emma Thompson is going to kind of look at you in a disappointed way, you know? Yeah. I mean, do you think, don't you think that Anthony Hopkins wanted to be himself and remains the day? Yes. But he knew his job and himself was service. And so his, right. what he did was that he let birds out of the, out of the fireplace and then gave a longing look at Emma Thompson and life went on. That's exactly right. So then, um, <laughs> that did happen, right? Wasn't there a scene with birds in the fireplace? I don't remember. Honestly, was, Merchant Ivory movies, symbolic. I watch them because I know that I'm like too embarrassed to admit that it's hard to watch them because I'm like too dumb for them. But also, they're just so boring. But I, I don't know. I feel like I have to watch them, so I do. But they're terrible. Like, let's be honest. It's always like people who are in love with each other but can't act on their love because their duties to like the British um, aristocracy trump everything. And then at some point, someone gets consumption, and pianos play very intensely. And it's like, please, Harry, please, Harry, Violet has consumption. Bring the rags, bring the rags. And they bring the rags, and then she's fine. And then it's like, then it ends. Yeah, I just remember um, not really buying those movies. Because I would watch them and think, you know what could solve this whole thing? Masturbation. <laughs> but nobody would ever take my advice and i'm like i can't with you people okay so captain it's calls sunny and ben to the bridge and um it's windy guys it's so windy we might all die this is gonna be the most difficult docking ever more difficult than when a kangaroo with a little shark fin taped to his head swam up to the boat slowly and tried to <laughs> Punched the rudder right out of the boat. Well, I turned that boat around. And I kicked him right in the head. I said, you get the fuck out of here, kangaroo. And he did. I saved us all. And that is what I call an adventure. <laughs> now, let me give you a lay of the land. We have a harbor. All right, we're coming into harbor. But there's also a big badge over there. There's a little boat over there. There's a dock over there. There's a woman with a sun hat on the beach. The most dangerous harbor of all time. Down, 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 down. Oh, I don't know how we're going to avoid the lady in the hat. The lady in the hat's walking over to Umbrella. All right, she's picking up a little, a little Yeti cup. She's taking a big sip. It's getting more dangerous. The wind is picking up. Her hat just flapped a little bit, and oh, we docked. It's safe. We docked. Safe. Oh, I've <laughs> saved another day. God damn it! That lady doesn't even know how close she came to being obliterated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, looking a little bit closer. It's Brenda Blathian. Well, that's a nice surprise. Glad mm. we saved her life. What a lovely boat you've got there. <laughs> is that is that a sailboat coming in? Oh no, it's a yacht. Oh, I didn't even realize. No. <laughs> okay, so uh, um the ca Fraser sends Barbie up with a coffee for the captain and um He's like, I'm a little bit worried about that froth. What do you think about the froth? And she's like, Ugh, and just ignores him. And he's like, why is she ignoring me? I can't take this. So up in the bridge. I mean, she won't even do froth banter with me. <laughs> <laughs> that coffee's not the only thing frothing. I really need a yes and right now. This is where Barbie's supposed to step in. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> and Captain and Barbie. So she brings him the coffee and he's like, what's wrong? She goes, long day. He goes, all right, well, I just saved the life of a lady on the beach with a big floppy hat. So if you want to talk to me about long day, <laughs> I don't know if it really compares, but take care of yourself. <laughs> um, really do not care. Okay, good boy. So um, the people have to leave now. Thank God. Oh, God. Dylan, I think, is doing push-ups or something. Or he's just yes. pumping himself up, going, let's go, baby, let's go. And uh, then everybody lines up to leave. And the husband guy is like, I don't want to leave. We have eight children. And Melanie's like, okay, let's not leave then. Ha, ha, ha. And he's like, maybe the crew wants us to go. These people have no idea how much the crew hates their guts. No idea. And I'm so excited for them. It's such a gift to these families when they get to watch themselves on TV and realize they're not the heroes of the story. Because they all think mm. they're going to be. Everyone hates you, and you earned it, Melanie. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your life being that fucking asshole 
on below deck. Who brought you? <laughs> My Joel's dream. Thing. I, I just always want to watch these shows with the charter guests because I always think that they they I think they always think they're they're like beloved and then they watch the show back and they're like wow they hated us I just always want that to see like do they do they feel that way or are they just like laughing at their own terrible behavior right um no I don't think they're laughing. I just want to see their I think shame. they're mortified I think they might be laughing and smiling until the Instagram comments start coming in and then they're like yeah. oh my god. They really hate us. <laughs> so, so now that everyone lines up to say goodbye, and Freezer's like, Bobby, 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 give me a hand. Well done. No comments. It's like, thank you. No, I mean, like, I don't want any more comments from you. Please be quiet for the rest of the seats, and thank you so much. <laughs> that wasn't a compliment. It was a request. Thank you. <laughs> so Jill's like, oh, we had Hi. so much fun. Thank you so much. Captain, I hope I'm not hard work. And for everybody I taught a little something to, you're welcome. I would just like to thank you know for coming night. to the Jill Zarin Academy. Now go forth and serve the world nugget ice. Okay. <laughs> now you know how to do things. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, I just want to say, um, Bethany, uh, she could never. And I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. <laughs> and Fraser's is like, I've never wanted guests in the shitter more than these. So mm-hmm. um, Melanie's like, oh my God, thank you guys so much. I know it might be hard that I, you know, maybe don't like fish occasionally, but sometimes I do. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. I mean, it's, if it's cooked. Did I mention that? If it's cooked, it's okay. Don't like raw fat. Melanie, let's go. Please don't make me go back to those children. Please. <laughs> so now, um, so now uh, uh, we're, we're back in the galley and Fraser's talking to Barbie. And he's like, what happened? He, she goes, nothing. It's like, okay. And then Captain calls up Anthony's like, Anthony, Anthony, Carey, come to the headmaster's office. Ha, ha, ha. Making it sound like we're joking, but you're going to have a hard time right now. All right, mate. I'll tell you straight. Dinner service was bullshit. It was appalling. My food was cold. And Jill Zarin's food. Cold. Cold. Sorry, from the dock. I know you're talking about it. Just want to say it's cold. My still cold from putting it in the pad toy last night. I just wanted to pass that on. Okay, I'll leave now. I'll, I'll wait. wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. You guys get in the Uber. I'll wait here on the dock. I'll see you back in New York. I'll take the next plane. Don't worry about me. Absolute bullshit. So, and then obviously two guests without food. What the fuck? Well, I was really, really bad at uh, trying to find the best solution for to making this dinner amazing. Uh, then I was mad and upset at myself because I could not save it and I wanted to call mommy, but I could not do it. And then um, the chef is so sad. What a sad figure. He's like, I know, reminds he's so me of like that moment fawn. when I was younger. Because at school, I was such a loser. And I can still remember my teacher telling me, you are such a loser. Born a loser, die a loser. <laughs> Jeez, bro. It was, <laughs> I know. it was like a sushi, yes, but a sushi mistake. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Dylan's like, yes, you may have been told you were loser, but at least someone probably told you you looked good when you were growing up. But now you can do push-ups, right? And be hot. You can be hot and have lots of people hit on you, right? At least you're not fat anymore. Yeah, because that's <laughs> um, a storyline of his, too, that he used to be chubby and he lost a lot of weight. This is like a very um, calorie-aware season <laughs> below that, because that's the storyline of two people now. This is the problem with food culture is that we're we're breaking people's souls and sending them off to sea <laughs> where they're failing. So, um, what do you, mean, food, you mean diet culture? Diet cult- culture. Yeah, food culture is still great. Diet culture. Food culture is great. Diet culture just destroying these deckies. Diet um, culture. You're welcome. I started that. You know, there wasn't a <laughs> diet cult culture before me. Go, Jill. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my taxi. I'll wait. So now Frazier's talking to Barbie. Oh my God, the taxi just got here. You guys aren't going to believe this. Guess what the taxi is? It's cold. It's cold. (laughs) It's actually a giant Diet Coke can on wheels. (laughs) Thank you, Bobby, for having your dad hook me up with that. (laughs) So Frazier's like, Bobby, are you okay? You seem down. She goes, I just had like a really rough day, like men down, like so much work. Yes, but 
just tell me what you're going through, because the alternative is me just thinking you're in a bad mood with me, and that's not conducive towards my team. Yeah, and she's like, well, okay, but like, meditating at the beach? I mean, you guys could have told me you were going to meditate, okay? And then I see Zandy at the bar, and I'm like, I'm up till 2.30 in the morning, and she's like sitting at the bar meditating? It's like, meditate sitting? And he's like, <laughs> what? what are you talking about? Right, okay, listen, I was at the bar cleaning, and she had clocked off, so you also weren't talking yesterday, so it couldn't have just been that. And she's like, well, I was like scared to communicate with you, obviously. I mean, it was like really hard to communicate with you. <laughs> but I can't deal with the no eye contact. I can't deal with it, Bobby. But I've been okay? better. Like I've been better than I have been. I mean, I've been like a lot better, right? But it's like you flipped a switch, and it feels like your fingers on the switch, getting ready to flip it right now. Stop flicking it. Stop the black and lights on. Lights off. Lights on. Lights. I can't do this. I'm like a parakeet. You keep sending me to sleep and waking me up over and over and over again. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding. Chill, Zarin is broken, Bobby. <laughs> All work, no play makes Barbie a Jill Zarin. Uh. So uh, Dylan, meanwhile, is upstairs with the deckies, and he's like, "We should take off our shirts and flex our backs at each other, and see who has the biggest back." So they do that, and uh, now it's time for the awful. tip meeting. <laughs> what do you say? I just said awful. I just it's muttered awful. awful. It really is. I mean, it's just awful. I say it every time, but it's not. It's just not hot because it requires so much effort. I need it to look effortless. I know it's not effortless, but it needs to look effortless. Like you've heard, never let them see you sweat, right? You need to do that more because right now it's just gross. And that mm. goes for you too, Amir. Okay. And everybody else. <laughs> oh, I don't watch <laughs> work out on Bravo. I don't want to see how much. How but Amir. I love Amir's personality, so like he remains hot. But Dylan, it's like I the the speed with which he went from being hot to just like unbearable is record. Like I don't know, we've, we've seen a twat. lot of hot, yeah, hot to from twat. hot we've, to twat in like five seconds. We've seen a lot of hot guys on this network that like eventually were like, oh, we could never. But his was just like it was like a one second transition. Yeah. Okay, so tip mating adventure. So I think in this charter, I've got a few. I feel like after this charter, I've got a few rounds with Mike Tyson. Am I right there? All right there. Anyone missing part of the years? God, I love that. All right, let's open the envelope. <laughs> it's twenty grand. The cheapest guests we've had all season, of course. So it's all it's quiet. We got a like a sad. It's like a half. It's because it's like not enough money to fund the fults from the tip. So yeah. Um, Really glad none of that Moderna money. Uh, fuck off, lady Melanie. So, what's her name? Melanie. Melanie. Mel Melinda. Melanie Moderna. So Kyle's like, where's tips so far? But it's still a lot of money. I've been trying to get money but together to travel because I've just found out I've got Native American heritage. My mom found out through DNA testing. She's got Comanche and Chippewa and we've got a huge family in Montana. We met on Skype. I'm going there for two years to live with them. I'm like, wait. <laughs> what, what, is, is <laughs> what is this AI-generated backstory <laughs> that just dropped in the middle of this episode? That was like, what? That was an entire spin-off of Yellowstone <laughs> in <laughs> two seconds. And then it's over. I need to and know more. Here's what I know. Here's what I've learned from the story. <laughs> Don't do a DNA test. I mean, look at your whole life is just shoved, turned right upside down. Like you're going to Montana for two. How do that's your whole <laughs> no, there's no yachts. Change. There's no yachts in Montana. <laughs> 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 he misread yurt for yacht or something. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Okay, so uh, tomorrow they get their day off thing where they go to a resort. Uh, so that's exciting. So now uh, Fraser, of course, is blaming the chef for the whole tip, which yeah. I think sucks. I think the chef probably had part to do with that. But service fucked up that huge order. You didn't manage expectations at all. Um, and you didn't charm any, literally any of the guests ever. So I don't, uh, leave my chef alone, okay? He's contemplating his life choices over there. Just, just yeah. get off his ass. Bon loser, die loser. <laughs> die loser. So, um, so now Zandy and Fraser are talking. And yeah, this is where Fraser is basically throwing 
uh, what's, uh, what's his face under the bus. So then Sonny's cleaning and Ben hugs her from behind, which just, even though it's consenting, it just feels gross to me. And then Fraser and Kyle are talking or Fraser's with Kyle and Barbie is, uh, she's just, I'm sorry, Barbie's with Kyle and Barbie's like, I'm like getting ready to skedaddle on out of here. And Kyle's like, no, mama didn't raise no quitter. <laughs> then we get a song. <laughs> I got swagger. Nobody else in the room matter. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to quit. I know. That sucks. <laughs> She's got so much swagger being the heir to a... So they're getting ready to go. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your last part? I said she had a lot of, she has a lot of swagger being the heir to a Coca-Cola magnate. Yeah. Hell yeah. So then um, the chef is like, uh, basically, they're all getting ready to go out. And the chef is very sad inside. He's like ready to party, but he's super sad. Because everyone knows he's a loser. And then he puts on sunglasses and unbuttons his shirt down to his belly button. To which I say, stop trying to bullshit me. Insecure people don't do that, you know? And good yeah. for you. I'm glad you're not as bad as you're acting. <laughs> so they get into bands. And Fraser's like, I'm going to ruin someone's life tonight. Hopefully Bobby's. And uh, Dylan's like, good energy. Good energy. And we're like, shut up. Please go away. And uh, they're at the restaurant, and they're just, like, talking, and they're, like, ordering, et cetera. And then there's, like, someone hot who starts walking up. And it's, like, we see blonde hair. It's, like, hot it's like blondie. Legs. We see her from behind. We see her legs. And she's walking up. Who is it? Is it Camille? It's not. Thank Jesus. It is Someone Fraser knows, because he's like, wait, are you? Oh, my God, I know Paris. And it's a girl named Paris. And it turns out she used to date a guy named Jake, who was a deckhand from two seasons ago. Who the fuck is this guy? We covered that season, right? Remember Jake with the handlebars, and he was sort of, um, oh, he hooked up with bar. Fraser. Um, by the way. He hooked I up just, with Fraser? Well, they kissed or something in the band, or, he, you know. he What? You know, this, this. How do I not remember a gay kiss because from that was, this show? Because we didn't really, we sort of petered off the, this season. That was when there was that like bleach blonde girl who, Cheap Stew, who said the N word. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it was that not was a good like season. the Kate replacement? Was that the Kate? She was the second Kate replacement. And she was the one who, every time a guest asked for something, she goes, My pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I just Googled him. I remember him. I was thinking um, of a different handlebar guy. Yeah. By the way, I just realized who the Paris reminds me of. I, I had said Claire Danes, but maybe she's like a touch of Claire Danes mixed with Melora Hardin. Uh, who's that? Melora Hardin. She was on The Office. She's like a character actress. If you look her up, you'd recognize her. Melora I think she's Hardin. Got, yeah. Oh, gosh. I spelled her name. Jill Malora. Malora. M -A. Okay, go on with the recap. No one needs to wait for me to Google. Okay. No, she's Claire Danes all the way to me. I just <laughs> No Malora for you. I, I'm going to give some Malora in there. So Fraser is like, oh, my God. She used to work with a friend of mine. And she's the ex, which means that she's gold. I'm like, she's the ex? Well, shouldn't that mean that she's not gold? Or is she gold because you don't like your friend? I feel like it should be the person who's actively dating your friend is the one who's gold. But if there's an ex situation, I don't gold. know. I don't know how that works. I don't date. So then Paris is uh, like, oh, I'm Paris. I'm a soul stewardess in Perth. I'm funny, outgoing, and I love mayonnaise. I love it. Ah! And then they show her just like shoving mayonnaise on things and shoving it down her face cracker. in the diary room, and her hands are covered in it. I'm not sure who told her this was going to be a great intro for Below Deck, but I was like, please die in your sleep. <laughs> but I when I first thought, I was like, please die. But then I loved her for the rest I of the I love time. her. I think she's great. I'm sh like, she's great. And But I th also think she thought she was auditioning for Love Island because she's like, you know, I say what's on my mind because I don't have any serotonin or happiness left. So I want to stay the part and regain some of that happiness back through people suffering. Ha 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 ha. That's not really true. I'm not evil. I promise. I'm like, you know, you're, this is below deck. None of this is going to matter. Right. <laughs> yeah. I kind of liked, that's when I instantly liked her, but she was still covered in manis. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I felt about it. So then um, Ben is in love. He's like, oh, my God. Like, he's staring at her like, wow. And he's like, where are you from? And she says, Perth. 
and uh, he's a he's a gold coaster. And she goes, oh, noise. And he's like, ha, 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 she said noise. Isn't that fun? That's hilarious. It's like a, a thing. It's an us thing. He marry me. <laughs> and Sonny's like, oh, wow, you're drop dead gorgeous. And Ben's like, yeah, she's an Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 am I right? So now Summer, uh, is, Sonny is like, she's insecure. No surprise. So then Ben wants goes and smokes with Kyle. And, I like that um, Summer at least knows and doesn't try and hide it. She's like, that girl's gorgeous. They have stuff in common. And I'm definitely worried because Ben's going to like her. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's no like, I don't mind. I'm just, I'm just cool. Like, what do I care? It's none of that. She's like, right. He probably wants to bang her and I'm going to slit his throat. Yeah. But that's also why you should not, be, should not have gone crawling back to Ben because he's obviously the person that does this. So, um, you know, her, so Barbie's like, huh, you look strong and not just arms, like emotionally. You look like you can take it. She's like, take it? I mean, my eyes, sure, I'd love some. No, the job. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. Again, mayonnaise. Wrong show. So, right? <laughs> so then um, Ben and Kyle go uh, talk about the hottie as they smoke cigarettes, and Sunny just looks fucking miserable. It's like she can hear them, you know, even though she can't. But she's like, oh my God, they're probably talking about how hot this girl is. <laughs> So then Fraser is immediately gossiping with Paris, and he's like, oh, so here's what's going on. Ben and Summer have been vibing. Bobby needs to die. Die horribly. <laughs> here's what I hope for. I hope you have a wonderful time on this charter. Also, I hope that a bus comes and runs Bobby's face over. Not just her midsection, just her face, so she can live with how ugly and stupid she is. <laughs> she dies. <laughs> She's like, all right, well, I just got off. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um... Meanwhile, Barbie's talking to Anthony, and she's like, I feel, like, much better right now. And he's like, well, talk to me. We are on the same boat. You know, Captain called me and said, you're terrible. I'm, like, alone in my department every day. She's like, yeah, I'm not really talking about your problems. It's really about my problems right now. So whatever you were saying, I wasn't really listening. Bye. You know what they say, born loser, die loser. Okay, wow. You're a loser. Uh, is there anybody else to talk to? <laughs> this is this is sad. So now they're all in their vans going back, and Paris is like, you know what? I've been all over. It's been daunting joining a crew. You don't know anything about, you know, you don't know who's a bitch. You don't know who's bad at their job. You don't know who else likes mayonnaise. It's kind of like the first day of mayo school. <laughs> so she loves doing laundry, which is all anyone really needs to hear. Which right? is also a lie. By the way, it's the biggest lie because Stu's always say this. Zandy even said it, and now when she when Paris says I love doing laundry, Zandy's like, "Oh, thank God!" Yeah, they always hate it. They always hate it, no matter what they say. Yeah, I think it's just preferable to the other stuff, you know. But it's still a hateable job. So yeah. then um, Ben and Barbie go to the bath. Uh, not Ben and Barbie. Yikes! Ben and Summer go to the bathroom to fuck. And um, Barbie goes to knock on the door. She's like, oh, yeah, he's making a tap on you guys. Like, you, are you meditating in there? Oh, come on. <laughs> Give me a tampon. So she winds up sort of cock blocking. And then um, Kyle and Barbie are like sh going to share a room. But Kyle has to sleep down on the bottom and everything. And um, yeah, everyone goes to sleep. So now okay, it's the so morning. It's basically beach day, right? So um, Ben is talking to Paris about growing up in Perth. And she's like, oh, I grew up in the country. We've got two kangaroos with collars on. Uh, they've got a kid now. It's crazy. And Ben goes, aren't they like porcupines? And she goes, yeah, they're like porcupines. And you should Google his penis. It's like a foot long. It's crazy. Google it. Google it. <laughs> Google his penis. Do it. Oh, I... So I was... Okay. I was confused. I thought they said... Okay, we've got a kid now. I thought they said they also had like some sort of animal called a kidner that was like a porcupine. I was so confused. Oh, that is that what it is? No, I've never heard of an animal called a kidner or kidner porcupine. Porcupine. <laughs> Looking it up. <laughs> nope. There is a kinder surprise nation's porcupine DV, or there's is an echidna. A chidna. Um, oh yeah, no. I've heard of a chidna. I mean, I don't know. So, um, 
<clears throat> they are now arriving at the beach resort, and the chef's all alone and sad. And Ben sits down with Barbie and gossips about Fraser. And she's like, I mean, like, I like Fraser better because, like, he's a good guy. It's just, like, he doesn't really get me. I'm like, do I have feelings? I don't even know around Fraser. You know what I mean? Because he certainly doesn't know. Like, it would just be nice to have some validation, you know? So then Fraser is watching, and he's like, I could do without that duo. I know exactly <laughs> what they're doing. They're talking about mother. I'm mother, by the way, because I'm the chief stew. <laughs> and I'm a bitch. So um, Barbie's like, Fraser would like to fire me so bad. And it's not because of my work ethic. It's because of my attitude that I voluntarily put on. <laughs> and Fraser's like, you know, you have to know this for context, Paris. Barbie was great at her job at first, but the attitude was feral. And Barbie's, that goes back to Barbie, and she goes, I mean, when your boss is, like, meditating, and, like, I'm doing all the work, it's kind of like, what? And Ben, of course, we know why Ben is there, because he's always trying to work against Fraser, right? He's like, oh, I see you. I see you doing all the work. She's like, yeah, I mean, I don't eat, I don't get breaks. I mean, I haven't even had a Coke, and, like, that paid for my childhood. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and Fraser is like, oh my god, now she's talking about me. You can see her doing it, can't you? Paris is like, well, listen, I just think some people take criticism hard. He's like, oh god, well, we all do. That's no excuse. So she's like, this is awkward because uh, we've talked on the phone, but now I guess that means he's comfortable to just spew bile about other people to me. Like, yikes. So yeah. uh, she's, she's like, she's basically like, I'm like, I've met him, like, once over the phone, and I understand that, like, there's something about me that gay men just respond to. Like, I'm sure there's, like, two gay podcasters somewhere who just already automatically love me. But I've got, like, a poster of her in my room already. I was like, can't go, how fast can you get this done? <laughs> it's just funny. She there's some Maddie, women. So she has a baby kangaroo. <laughs> she has, like, a little bit of an austerity about her, so she's an icon. Um <laughs> But uh, she's kind of like, but I don't know why, like, I don't know, I don't know any of these people. Why are you venting to me? So then Fraser goes over to Barbie and goes, hey, what's the goss? What were you and Ben talking about? I'm going to pretend to be kind with you before I go in on you. And she's like, um, like everything, like, you know, and he sees like how much I'm working and he's like, you're not really part of your team. And I just like vent to the deck team and everything. And it's like, oh, good for you. But if we can't move on from it, we can't move on. So you should, it's basically like, why aren't you venting to me? Like, this is a problem. Yeah. And that's why she's not venting to you, though. You know? Yeah, she's like, I don't feel safe with you. I don't feel like you, like, like you want things. And, like, you, I, I just feel like you don't own things. And I feel like you dismiss my feelings. She's like, no, that's ridiculous. I don't know if you want to hear that ever again. I don't, of course I don't dismiss your feelings. So I'm, let's not even address that going forward. Listen, class on your feelings is dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Can I dismiss the glass on your face? I just, I don't want to talk about it anymore, all right? And I just don't understand why you don't open up to me. But now that you have, you're working with me. And she goes, you mean working for you? He goes, yes, actually. So I don't need to know what you're going through. You're working for me. And if you don't like it, you can fuck off. And I was like, whoa. And Summer is kind of watching this as she eats down the, down the beach. And she starts cracking up because it's so blatantly just gross and unprofessional. This isn't cool. You shouldn't do this. And also, <laughs> but it's don't like every, harass but it's the girl every on her of... day off. If she wants to go talk yeah. about you, she has every right to go vent about her boss. But then for you to come up and be like, tell me, well, actually, I'm your boss, bitch. It's like, no, you don't get to do that. This, this is gross. He's I, acting I don't... like he's in high school. He's acting like he's finally been given some power as a like popular girl in high school, and he needs to cut the shit. You're supposed to be the boss, not head cheerleader. Cut it out. Yeah, um, I think he should have said, whatever, I will deal with this, not on our day off. But that being said, I think it's hilarious that we spent so many below deck recaps saying, like, what since when to, like, you're there to do your job. Who, when is this about getting you? When is it about getting you? And then Fraser basically says, yeah, I'm the boss. It's not up to for me to have to get you. You have to do the work. And we're like, how dare he say that to her? But he's chasing her around the beach. She's like, if she came to him and was like, here's my feelings, you dismiss me, nah, 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 then that's one thing, but she's not. She's venting to somebody else. And he's like, you're not opening up to me. I see you talking to everybody, so just open up to me. And then she does, and he's like, 
telling her off. Like you can't have it both ways. If you don't want her to be opening up around her feelings, then don't run after her. If she ignores yeah. you at work, who cares? She's doing her job. You know, he like, should have just let it be like, he should yeah, have your like, feelings I, are the one that are hurt and that matter the most here. And it shouldn't be about your feelings. The girl's doing her damn work. Yeah. So, you know, he, he walks off and she says, you know, I can't speak to him. He doesn't listen. If I, if I speak up, I'm a bitch. If I don't, I'm passive aggressive. Which is a bind that people are in quite a lot. Um, although I do think like it's you're also passive aggressive because you're passive aggressive. Like we're all watching it. So uh, Barbie is uh, so she's like, oh come on, like Fraser, stop doing this. Like stop being in the zone. I love you. And she goes, well, you don't act like it. You're such a horrible person when you don't want to speak to anyone. You don't have eye contact. You're rude. You're horrible, and you're not someone to work with. <laughs> See, I mean, that's just some professional. I just feel like you're the parent in the situation. And Bobby, don't you realize we now have a gay icon on the on the staff now? You have to bring up your game. <laughs> and then, of course, Barbie is like, oh, so that means you want me to go? Is that what you're saying? You want me to go? And he's like, no, I just want you to understand how it works. Welcome to how it works. Like, if you can do it, fantastic. If you can't do it, fantastic. And she goes, okay, cool. So she walks off and starts crying. And then the chef is going, he's like alone on a floaty. He just, it's like the chef on the live alone, die alone floaty. And he's like, <laughs> I am disappointing, Captain. I'm disappointing everyone. I'm chef for four years. I'm still learning. Every restaurant is different. And there's a guy in restaurant with sauce. There's a guy in restaurant with cleaning dish. Me. I'm this guy inside me all by myself. But I promise young me, fat little me. I said one day. You will work a pre-plant, and you will make good pasta. I cannot lie to chubby me. Okay. <laughs> so now Zandy's talking to Dylan and Sonny, and Zandy's like, so I'm not being mean to anyone on this boat, but I need a man. And Sonny's like, well, do you, do you think you and Ben could have had the thing? She's like, no, no, no. I'm not desperate enough to be with Ben, like, I mean, who would lower their standards to be with someone like, oh, I'm sorry, Sonny, you're right there. I, I really should be careful about what I say. But no, I need someone who's older, someone who knows what they want, not just some fuck boy who looks sort of like a Disney character. No, that's I need I need something better than that. It's really pathetic to go up to someone like that. Oh, again, I just keep forgetting you're right there. You're right there, Sonny. Sorry. <laughs> God, Sonny, could you, like, go five seconds without your glaring insecurities spewing all over everybody else? My God. She's like, yeah, I need to get laid. Oh, really? You want to fuck Ben? Did you? Would you fuck Ben? I'm like, Okay, pretend it's an alternate timeline. You're fucking Ben right now. Do you like fucking Ben? How's that going for you? Oh, really? You're fucking Ben? Really? You want a fucking piece of me, bitch? Come on, bitch! <laughs> it's like, Sonny, you are not dating Idris Elba. Relax. <laughs> it's Ben. Okay, let's all calm down. Exactly. Sorry, so now Paris me, is... Um, accidentally yanking sorry. my earplugs out. In a, in a, in a very passionate Sonny impersonation. Very, very so, um, Sonny. <laughs> So now Paris decides Called to go check in. <laughs> Paris decides to go check in on Barbie, and Barbie's crying. She's like, "I'm fine. I'm sorry, Paris. I'm fine. I'm fine." No, you're not. Listen, as the owner of two kangaroos, I can always tell when a creature is sad. No, I'm fine. Okay, I just have all these issues with Fraser, but it's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> no, you're not. Let's get drunk. So Barbie's like, "I mean, I just have all these issues with Fraser. It's like very difficult because like he doesn't even care how I feel." And she's like, "Would you like a beverage? That that always helps." So then Fraser goes up to bitch to Ben about it. Which, by the way, Ben's not your friend. And he's going to totally use this against you. But he's yeah. like, well, I just want an interior I can work with. And he's like, but isn't there anyone to fuck? Maybe that'll help. <laughs> Stop <laughs> fucking an underling, bro. So the Barbie is still talking to Parrish. Because we just have, like, two different styles um, where I'm, like, a rich person who's, like, pretending to be, like, a servant. And he's an actual servant. It's just, like, weird. And she's like different work styles no it's just like personal we just like don't get each other like well you know everyone has their triggers and i think you know resolution is if you can communicate without triggering your defensiveness but we can't communicate without triggering each other that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> and she's like yeah i think we're just all drama queens in this situation all right now let me tell you who's a real drama queen a baby kangaroo doesn't get his <laughs> way he'll smack you right in the face with his dick it's about foot long. <laughs> Have you Googled it? It's the craziest shit you'll ever Google. Yeah, don't get on the wrong side of Camilla Parker Bowles. That's the name of one of our kangaroos. 
So <laughs> we hated that because he kept throwing balls at us. The craziest <laughs> kangaroo. We also wanted to give it some identity issues. <laughs> okay, so Fraser is like, I am done. After that conversation, I have absolutely had it with that. And so he's like, oh, I give people so many chances. What are you talking about? You tried to fire her ass the first day and the, the captain went. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's like, he's like, you know what? Two strike, you know, first strike was her existing. Second strike was her coming her hair. Third strike, you're off the boat. Simple. You know what I've learned? You have to pull the kill cord a lot earlier. Okay. And Ben's like, oh, I think but you're taking it. also your ball. second strike, sir, because you've lost one employee already who, granted, did have some emotional stuff going on, but you certainly didn't help with any of that. And now you've got another one. So do you really want two employees leaving on one of your first seasons as Chief Stew? Or is this his first? De this is his second season as Chief Stew, right? Or is it his first? This is it's his second, second season. Right? Second. Yeah. You have to deal with Camille. Oh, so now we see Dylan trying to flirt with Paris. He's he on the hunt, said it you was know. a second. God, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead. I'm going to be quiet so, and stop. <laughs> so Dylan is trying to flirt with Paris. And he's like, you know, it's funny. You're named Paris and you're from Australia. You should have been named Crocodile or Crocs. How about that? And Paris is like, just looking at him like, you know, on the gay icon. He just. I'm going to banish cringes. you. <laughs> I'm going to banish you to having the, the, the highest profile woman in your life being Katie Maloney. Good luck. <laughs> she goes, are you joking? And he's like, do you like Steve Irwin then? And she's like, what kind of question is that? He's a national treasure. He goes, well, I grew up watching him on Discovery Channel. That should count for something, right? Right? You can't say something, can you? And she goes, I'm just trying to figure out how that gives you a whole pass for being so cringe. <laughs> so what's cringe? I mean, if Steve Irwin was right here right now, he'd be like, crikey, that's, that's cringe, mate. Could you imagine Steve Irwin would actually be embarrassed for you? And she's like, that guy's gorgeous, but god damn, how unfuckable is that guy? Oh my <laughs> god. So Dylan's like, well, I was like, everything's Gucci in the world. And I looked down and my right knot was out. I was like, oh, high five, ow! It was my knot. It was a lower five and it also hurt. I forgot nuts don't have hands. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he was on mute, I think you'd get more action. Jesus Christ, could you just get out of my face? This is re you're re really ruining my brand right now. I mean, just what so everyone wants to hear. I think you've got salad on your teeth. <laughs> wow. His game is really strong. So now Ben comes over and Paris is like, oh, look there, it's Mr. Firefighter. Did you put the fire out? He's like, well, I tried. And then he starts, he's talking to her and he puts his hand right on her knee, which I was like, what is going on here? Like, this is a, I feel like it's inappropriate just in general to do that. And B, you're doing it within sight of Sonny. And yes, you and Sonny may not be official. You may not be exclusive. But it's hella disrespectful no matter what. Not only, but that's, I also just think it's like a strange it's uh, personal Ugh. space issue yeah. with Paris. I just think it's totally inappropriate. Especially because he is, again, technically uh, a superior to her. Even though they're in different departments. And I don't want to hear this. Oh, I do it with everybody. You don't do it with the dude. You don't do it with anybody you're not going to fuck. You're trying to fuck. Yep. Right? So I don't want to hear that. That's a bunch of crap. It's gross. It's not professional. It's skeevy. He's a skeeve ball. You know, I he's think our read on much. him is absolutely correct. He's gross. He is so, gross. So um, he's like, thank you so much for for trying to chat about about things with her because, you know, things are so difficult on the boat. And Sonny sees this. And Paris is like, I just want to make sure it's okay. And, he, and she kind of pats him. And then he takes her arm. It's like, oh, God. And Sonny sees it and goes, oh, God. And, and just, ben, you know, just like, a reminder, Sonny's still with Ben, from what I understand. Yeah. <laughs> from it's the just, internet. It's, it's, it's Get disrespectful. Some standards, please. And she's like, I don't think you should touch other people. Like, these are the conversations I wish I'd have with Ben. Like, if you want to be, like, if you want, if people want to be in your life, they'll be in your life. If they don't, they can fuck off. Like, sayonara, bye, bye. Um, and I don't know why it cracked me up at the time that she's just getting angrier and anger, and she's just on this this Jurassic Park dinosaur floaty, but she, she just starts to like get pissed and she's on this dinosaur like, Ugh. so she's like, this man that I'm, I'm with is touching another woman. That makes me uncomfortable, jealous, uncomfortable, scary, mad disrespect. Yeah. So she's pissed. So now Paris is talking to Fraser about how uh, Barbie's upset. And she's like, I think you guys might be so upset because you're really similar, you know? And he's like, oh God, I hope I'm not similar to her. <laughs> 
awful. What a terrible thing to say. I thought we were friends. So Barbie's base then, then now they're getting changed to go out to dinner. So Barbie's like calling her mom and she's sobbing and she's like, Mom, I think I like I don't want to give up, but I want to come home right now. And her mom's like, No, don't give up, don't give up. She's like, please, the nannies are so excited that they have another couple of weeks away from you. We can't lose another one, honey. She's like, but I want to go home. And then we get to Fraser being like, I'm done. I am sorry. But guess what? I'm Chief Stew. And no one. <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> wow. I get yeah, that... it. I, it's, a huge, it's a huge excitement for you, but you're going to need to calm it with that. And Barbie's like, I have an amazing life and I don't need to be around people that don't appreciate me. I feel like if I got this is not for me. Welcome to the circus. So we'll be done. We'll have to see if she's actually gonna leave, but that'll be for the next episode. Well, wow. Um what a wild ride. What a fun show. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for being here for Below Deck, okay? <laughs> Tickets for Crappens Live in Europa and Los Angeles in May, all on sale right now. Watch at Crappens.com. This Patreon video, all of our Patreon videos, all of our bonus episodes, blah, blah, blah. Patreon.com. Also, join us next week for the Vanderpump Villas craziness. Patreon two-part premiere ep- four-episode discussion followed by main uh, feed recaps of the show. Go watch Vanderpump Villa, and we will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Watch what crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica. Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.